And in business, the Federal Executive Council approved 7.2% as the country's new value-added tax rate, up from the current 5%. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, has however said consultations were ongoing over when the new rate would apply. Recall that the federal government retained 15% of the VAT, 50% for the state, and local governments usually get 35%. Here are some of the items exempted from from the VAT. We have the medical and pharmaceutical raw materials, basic food items, books, newspapers and magazines, educational materials, infant food, commercial vehicles and spare parts, educational materials, agricultural equipment and products, fertilizer, water treatment chemicals. I have live in the studio Olufunsho Olaojo. He is the manager commercial practice group at Anderson Tax. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. Let's start from the basics. For those on the streets that do not understand what VAT is, help them in the most simplified way. Help them understand what VAT is and how and who bears the brunt of it. Okay. So uh, VAT is um, value added tax. So it is a, a tax paid on consumption. So it's charged at 5%. So whenever you go um, to, to a mall, for instance, you buy whatever you buy, you pay VAT on it. So because you're, you're consuming that goods so or that you're enjoying that service, you then pay VAT. So the, a list of um, uh, goods and services exempt um, has been previously shown on the screen. So, um, so that, those are the ones that are specifically exempt from VAT. So any other thing not exempted, from the VAT is, um, is liable to VAT. So, okay, so are you saying that when I go to the market, what happens to me if I have to buy a two bar of yam or groundnut oil? Okay, so like fish, I said, fish, yeah. meat. Okay, so, um, uh, so as part of the exempt items is basic food item. So if you go to the market and you buy fish, you buy two bar of yam, you buy rice, those are all exempted from VAT, provided you, are, you bought them from the open market. So, okay. um, yeah, so, so those are exempted. You don't get to pay VAT on it because it's, it's, it's food that, you can, that uh, general populace consume. So uh, VAT is targeted at other, other, goods, other goods and services that, be, that are different from these basic food items. Help people understand. If I buy a bag of rice and a bottle of palm oil, of course yeah. the bottle of palm oil has already been processed. If I buy it from the open market, there's no VAT on it. Yeah, exactly. If I buy it from a shopping mall, there's VAT there's on it. VAT. So the reason why there's VAT, we buy it from a shopping mall, is uh, because FIS has always argued that when you buy it from the mall, there are other services you enjoy. So there's the convenience, there's the ambience and the ease that you get and the service, the, the service that, that then follows the, the sale of that palm oil. So you're also paying for comfort in that case. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, from the point of an expert, I mean, you work with Anderson Tax. Mm -hmm. You relate with the government officials in charge of tax collection. You relate with companies and individuals that pay these taxes. Would you say that this is the best time to implement such a policy? or such, yeah, moving from 5% to 7.2%. Okay, so, um, well, uh, going back the memory line, you remember that President Olusha Mubasanjo also tried to increase the VAT to yes. 10%, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was, um, that was uh, up to and it went back to 5%. Okay, so increasing it now, without taking into consideration all the other, uh, all the other issues that needs to be addressed, is, 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 is wrong actually, it's not the right, I don't think it's the right timing. So what should have happened is all the other issues in the VAT actually have been addressed before increasing the rates. What issues exactly are we talking okay. about here? Yeah, so for instance, um, the, the reclaim mechanism in Nigeria is not exactly how, it's, how it should be. So there are certain, certain items, that, certain things that you do that you're not able, that, that you buy, that you're not able to recover the VAT on them. For instance, if you run a service company and all you do is provide services, you won't be able to recover the VAT. You pay on um, on whatever you buy to provide that service to your okay. customers. Okay. So uh, presently, the claim of input VAT is limited to goods bought, bought and resold and to goods manufactured. So the only manufacturers are able to reclaim input VAT and those that resell goods and, goods and services. Okay. So this is limiting, actually. So it's limiting when you compare okay. to the old world. So this, 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 this kind of approach um, tends towards a sales tax more than a VAT tax. Mm. So VAT tax actually should, should have a reclaim mechanism for input VAT, the VAT you have paid to be able to provide the goods and services that you are selling. 
Okay. Well, on this re on this note, when you now juxtapose the personal income tax, income per capita of individuals, mm -hmm. and the fact that we are trying to increase, or the government is trying to increase um, the VAT on purchased goods, how would this affect the purchasing power of the regular Nigerian? Okay, so um, what will happen is um, prices of goods and services will go up because increasing from 5% to 7.2% is, is more than 40% increase, actually. So you see prices of goods and services jump up. And what would then happen? The minimum wage, for the, the purpose for which this uh, VAT rate is increased is so that it can, more monies can be generated and shared to the state and local government so they can pay minimum wage. Then the, the minimum wage will then lose value. People will not be able to even afford Yes, because those goods now we are trying to fund the minimum wage, but then, of course, v people would, would go and buy things exactly. and VAT will still be taken off them. Exactly. So increased VAT. So, so at the end of the day, the purchasing power of, of people, of the, of the populace, will be reduced. Because I was having a conversation with you know my boss, and then we had to put down the GDP formula yeah. itself, and we saw that consumer spending also has a way of increasing. It has an added, added, an addition to the GDP at the end of the day. Yeah. You're all right, but then um, let's take a look at this particular increase now. Would you recommend that things like the personal income tax and the company income tax is also reduced? So that, I mean, there should be a balance of some sort. Okay, so um, VAT is actually an indirect tax. Uh, why personal income tax and company income tax are direct taxes? So VAT is borne by final consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so both personal income tax and CIT is paid on income that individuals and companies earn respectively. Okay, so um, I'm aware there's, there's an amendment currently with, for the National Assembly to reduce the CIT company income tax rate for small companies to 20%. So, but um, that aside, I, I don't think there should be a reduction in tax rates because, okay. um, especially for individuals, the tax rates in Nigeria for individuals is one of the income personal tax income tax. Remain. Yeah, it's one of the lowest around the world. So what I what I think should happen is um, a revamping of the system. The system. So there, there are recommendations already made by the National Tax Policy Review Committee. So mm -hmm. those recommendations need to be brought on board, and there's, need, there's there's a need to review all the tax laws and bring in necessary amendments in order to improve the tax space. And in this Nigeria. should be done very quickly, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, sure, timely. Yeah. And finally people's concern when they need to pay taxes is, am I seeing the value for the tax that I'm paying? Yeah. Because <laughs> when you say that people do not pay their taxes as much as they should pay, mm -hmm. some of their complaints are around the fact that, oh, I keep paying taxes, but then my, the streets leading to my house still That's remains bad. the same. Yeah. What can be done? Okay, well... Um, and how can we, mo most importantly, how can we make these people be more accountable, the people that we pay our taxes to. Okay, so you see, taxation is a social contract, right? So um, when people pay taxes to government, they expect uh, a, a, a social amenities and returns, they expect services and returns. So when they don't see all of that happen, they begin to, they begin to, um, to, 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 to think that way, that why am I paying these taxes when I don't even get anything in returns? Mm -hmm. If you look at other countries around the world where, 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 where infrastructure is, uh, is, is top notch and everything works well, you see that the tax compliance there is very high mm -hmm. because people know that government, the government yeah, will give the back to them. They can see the effect. They can attend tax schools. Mm -hmm. They can attend the public hospitals and they work well. The public schools work well. So that is why people, people, have, uh, people, people voluntarily are willing to pay, pay their, their taxes. Tans. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. That's all we can have at this point. Thank all you right. for joining me in the studio. You're welcome. Oh, 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 oh,